Hey, your fellow pips, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. Today, I want to just talk about a quick trip I went on beautiful seaside village of Bacton. So we rolled in there about five or six o'clock in the evening. It was really nice. It was a beautiful evening. And I uh, decided to do one or two little bits of photography. And it was the first time I actually took the the tripod out. The, the, there's a link here for it. Um, the one that it was the first time I'd actually taken it on anything that resembles a proper photo shoot. And what I wanted to do was just have a go with the long exposures. And believe me, with the setup I had, which was the X-T4 and the 10 to 24, along with the leaf filter system, it worked perfect. Absolutely 100% perfect. I'd say the weather was not really windy, but I don't think it would have made any difference. Uh, I was only shooting around probably the, the longest was around about 30 seconds. But the best thing about shooting on a tripod was being able to manipulate the shutter speed so that I could drag the waves. I just wanted to drag it so that it just it just gave you a sense of power from the waves. And there were some beautiful, beautiful waves. So take a quick look at the slideshow that I've put together. Uh, there's not that many images. I literally had an hour. We walked to the chip shop, waited for the sun to set down a little bit, and it, it soon did. Um, it was basically setting when we set set off on our little walk along the, the seafront. And uh, it, it was just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place to be. Take a look. So uh, the next day, I always go to Norfolk. The reason why I go is I do, I do like to go and tend to my grandparents' grave. So that's one of the reasons why I go. Um, and whilst I'm there, I always make sure I do some sort of photography, look for a new place to stay, which then forces me to then um, try and photograph something that I've never photographed before. And Bacton was that place for me. But knowing full well that I love lighthouses and because I was so close to Happinsburg, I had to go and revisit the lighthouse at Happinsburg. And what an amazing place. Every time you go there, the, the field is growing something different. And I was a little bit apprehensive on the way thinking, has it been at harvest? Is there going to be any crops there? Is it just going to be flat and look really plain and, and probably nasty from where it's been mutilated by combines? But <laughs> it wasn't. It was really, really nice. And it, it, was, it was just perfect. Take a look at the slideshow I've put together for you at Happinsburg, one of my favourite lighthouses in the country. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I hope you enjoyed the quick compilation I've put together from uh, Happingsburg and Bacton. There was probably around about 50 images shot in total from the two locations. I think what I got from this trip was how to really concentrate on controlling the shutter and dragging it. I mean, I'm not saying long, long exposures. I'm talking about half a second, um, a second or maybe even two seconds just to get some movement in the frame. And at Happensburg, that is what happened with the wind blowing off from the sea, pushing everything over to the right of the camera. And for me, it worked an absolute treat. Yeah, so in this image, where what I wanted to do was once again drag the shutter. And uh, I, I wanted just to get the feel of the force of the water. But how subtle it is in the foreground to how the velocity of the waves are in the background. And by dragging the shutter for just a couple of seconds, it works an absolute treat, but you've got to have your tripod. It was great to get the tripod out. So yeah, I mean, that's the thing and it's, it's light, it's small and it's compact, which using the setup I'm now using, which for this evening shoot was the X-T4 along with the 10 to 24 mil lens. Just practice dragging your shutter. It's a lovely thing to do once you've mastered it. With the, with the cameras today, they have got good image stabilization in along with the IBIS in the X-T4 and the image stabilization on the lens. Working together is gonna give you a good starting point. Something of a 30th of a second, how, how that can give you some sort of velocity from the waves and, and like I said before leaving that calmness in the front it's brilliant I love it I absolutely do love it it's, it's fantastic so give it a go next time you're out at the beach or somewhere like that or even in a field much like the Happensburg one that you can see the whether it's corn wheat grasses anything like that moving but don't overdo it because it just becomes a complete blur like this one. So yeah, I mean, when I was shooting these these evening ones at the beach, there was around about nine-ish, half past nine at night. And it, it was starting to get really dark. Though I had the tripod, I was still trying to give you um, a sense of that darkness coming in. And in this image, what I like about it is the way that the sun's setting over here in this left-hand side and how dark it is in this right-hand side and the way in the middle, they just blend so nicely together, the two colors of the sky. And then adding a little bit of light myself, not from any artificial light, but all done in Photoshop, just gently and caring and thinking about where the light would be just to bring the foreground up and give you something to look at rather than just dark shadows. But I did go for the silhouette of the surfers. Uh, I could have brought them up, I could have brought the shadows up and then you would have got some sort of a little bit more detail out of the surface. But, you know, I didn't, I don't know them people. They don't know me. I didn't really didn't really matter to me and all I wanted to suggest to the viewer was that these are surfers coming out with the sun setting in the background and this for me is a beautiful beautiful image it says a lot really does I really like it now one of my sort of techniques in shooting and one of the ways of photographing is for me to get down low I do enjoy to shoot from the ground looking up and when you've got something that's quite masculine in in a shot it's always good to shoot up that will give you that more of a, a sort of a dominating feel to the image uh, anything that looks down upon you while you're looking up is it's a strong it gives us a, a strong image and for me shooting up through the grasses here 
at the lighthouse was a no-brainer. I, I did try it, uh, portrait and landscape, but for some reason, I just can't work with portraits other than when I'm shooting a portrait. And even then, I like to shoot as a um, landscape. It's really strange, but it's always a good perspective. And once again, with the X-T4, you've got that flippy out screen so you can more or less lay it on the ground and tilt it up and looking at the screen so you're not laying on the ground. That's another great thing about the Fuji films, but a lot of cameras are doing that and I've done it way before Fuji even ever dreamt about it. A quick tip I've got to give you is um, always put your horizontal line in because when you're down on the floor, you think it's straight, but it's not. So make sure you get that green line going across the, the screen perfectly straight. What will happen is, is as you move the camera left and right, the and once it's dead center, it will go, the line will go green. So just remember that, get it on your axis, get it dead bright and uh, shoot up. It's a brilliant perspective to look at. I love it. It's probably one of my all time favorite ways of shooting. I do it all the time. Low, look up, brilliant. So the other quick thing before I go is I've been looking into transferring all my old eight millimeter video and my mini DVI stuff onto the computer. I purchased this, <clears throat> it was 13 pound on Amazon. I'll put a link in the bottom, but I'm gonna do a review on this before I actually use it. Now, the reason why I've not done anything with this yet, I've had it about a week. My eight millimeter video camera, it just won't work. It, I mean, it is, I think I bought it about 1995. Might have been even early, maybe like 93, 94. It's a Samyo DP66, I think. And great camera, but for some reason it's just, when you play it, it's there's nothing on there as if you're playing a blank video. And when you look through the viewfinder to see it, it's like when the heads have gone and everything's all just a complete mess. But so I cleaned the heads, that still did nothing, and there was nothing coming through the the um, RCA plugs. So I just gathered that it, it's no good. So I'm looking for another one. <clears throat> to replace it but me mini dv is fine that works okay and i have got quite a few of those tapes but i did want to start with the eight millimeter and i think that's why i've not really pushed myself to do it because in my mind i want to do the eight mil stuff and i've got loads of it <laughs> loads and it'd be great to digitize it and have it on the computer and be able to do some of the things that i've learned to do over the years in editing video so i'm looking forward to doing that so keep posted and uh, I'll, I'll let you know how I'll get on. So with that said and done, there's one thing left to do. And that's <laughs> get out and shoot. Till next time. See ya. Mm -hmm.